Hey guys, it's Donald here. Thanks for tuning into this. I hope you've seen the introduction video. So this video I'm going to be reviewing the Beatles Anthology 1. Um, yeah, I happen to have two copies of the CD because I got each CD really cheap and I just felt like buying this for some reason. Um, so yeah, just cool to have. I play this one more, but this is the more better shaped one like the jewel case is a little beat up but I uh, it's uh I just have two copies anyway yeah um it says uh the Beatles anthology one this was released in November 1995 um this includes recordings from 1958 to 1964 um it also includes a bonus track that um, John Lennon started and then the other three Beatles finished during this making of this series. So, yeah. i just like to say this is a really nice album cover here. It really shows the basically mostly of the Beatles in the Cabin Club era and a little before Ringo. I think it's a pretty good... Uh, uh, cover to show but I kind of wish that if I had anything to change on it I would show more like a hard day's night photo or Beatles for sale because it's they have those songs on here as well and I kind of wish that the album itself too had songs from the Cavern Club and some from Hamburg Germany like some like those uh, rare ones or just the um, with Pete Best um, but it's still a pretty good, uh, uh, presentation here. All right, so the album, I'll do review some of the tracks. This one starts with, uh, Freeze a Bird, which is, uh, kind of, uh, the one that John Lennon started and the other three Beatles finished. It was about the 70s John Lennon started. I kind of, I could live without it, surprisingly, at least on here, because I... I kind of wish it was just all the original Beatles stuff which is on here besides that and that doesn't really do anything for that that's just really a new Beatles song but I could live without it so the album has like little dialogue that's like 10 seconds in between I kind of live without that as well but that's just kind of helpful for new Beatles fans or new listeners um but I like to say this album has lots of really nice stuff on here, like in spite of all the danger. Um, uh, so that would be the day. Um, those are from 1958. It has some really nice sounding to the Beatles as teenagers, um, which is uh, John Paul and George, and then uh, two or three other guys. I forgot their names. They're uh, they uh, they each pitched in uh, record a uh, 78, and those are the two songs on it. The sound quality isn't really good, but the songs themselves are, I think they're pretty good, and it shows why the Beatles um, themselves are masters at what they do. Um, so I'd say those are pretty good on here. And then the song Hallelujah Love Her Soul, which was made in 1960, is recorded in, I believe, Paul's bathroom, and it has um, John Paul George and Stu Sufcliffe, who was the bass. Um, it's a pretty good song. It's just your standard old song. They don't really do anything different with it. The quality isn't really good because it was recorded with some type of recorder. Um, it's okay. Um, the next one, which is in the same type of a session, which is You'll Be Mine. I think that's a pretty outstanding track despite the quality. I just really like their creativity in there. It kind of shows what the Beatles could have done way later on it kind of reminds me of an early version of like revolution 9 or something like that um it's pretty cool um and the last one on there are the sessions is uh cheyenne which is an instrumental um that's a really nice one i really like it the quality once again not real good but it sounds the best on that song but the sh it's a shorter version on here i wish the whole long version was on here um and it has some of the tony sheridan recordings my bonnie 
which has Tony Sheridan lead singing. It's an outstanding song. I really like the jamming on there. And it has Ain't She Sweet, which is just John Lennon without Sheridan. That was during the same sessions, which is uh, obviously a classic one. And then uh, Cry for a Shadow, which is an instrumental of George Harrison and uh, John Lennon, which is the same session, just doesn't have Tony Sheridan. Um, I kind of wish so it had more Tony Sheridan songs. The, only, the basic one only is My Bonnie. Um, I wish it had, like, When the Saints Go Marching In or Why or Nobody's Child. Those are some pretty cool ones. But these are still good. And then it has some of the deck audition stuff on here. Which is um, Searching. Which is a pretty fun song. Um, Three Cool Cats. Is, uh, I really like that too. And the Sheik of Amarni. Which uh, I really think it's a nice rocker. It kind of it reminded me of Batman. When I first heard it. Like the guitars in there. How it sounds. I really think uh, Three Cool Cats. And the Sheik of Amarni is a nice combined on here i like that flow the best on here it almost sounds like a melody those two songs um as like dreamers do which is uh lennon mccartney i believe and that's a really nice one from the deck audition i wish they had the beatles re-recorded it later on then it has um hello little girl which is uh another original i think that's a really nice song it kind of shows what the beatles were gonna start turning into um, when they became famous, but those are all the Decca songs. I kind of wish they had more as well Like I think songs like they did uh, crying waiting hoping and take care uh, take good care of my baby and to know him is to Love him and some other good ones on there. Those were really nice ones that should have been on here um, then there's a uh, Song Best Song by Mucho. I don't even know when that was recorded. It was in between the deck audition and when Ringo was joining. So I, I think it's Pete Best on drums. And it has a Pete Best version of Love Me Do. And it has How Do You Do It, which I believe Pete Best is on drums there too. And it has finally a Ringo song on here, which is like the earliest version, I believe, of Please Please Me. I think it's a really nice version. Not as good as the official one, but still pretty good. It has one after 909, which you probably heard from Let It Be, which is on here. It has the one with false starts, and then it has the full recording. Um, then it has a song, Lend Me Your Comb, which I really, really like that song. I think it's, uh, I really like just their, uh, their singing on there and Ringo's drumming techniques on there, and I like the bass on there too and then it has uh i'll get you which i don't really care for the drums are not really eligible on here so i could live without that and um this is probably the highlight of the whole album or disc one um i saw her standing there which is a live performance um i think it's outstanding I think it's just as good as the original. It was recorded in 1963. Uh, you could really hear all the instruments. Paul's bass is really good in there. And I really like when they do their screaming right before the solo. I think it's Paul screaming or Paul and John. I really like their scream there. And then does, Ringo does a drum roll. And then it goes into the solo. Which is a really nice one. And then he has a couple live one for me to you. Which is a really nice one. Money which I like better than the studio one it has a really raw sound to it um um uh sorry i can't speak right now all right um you really got a hold on me which i think is another really nice one i just really like their recordings here the live ones it's just outstanding and i like the raw version of uh roll over beethoven and that's disc two um disc uh, i mean that's disc one this too is what's going to go right now, which has some more live recordings. These uh, three songs here, I believe, are the one when they did in front of the Queen or something like that. She Loves You, which is a good one. Um, Till There Was You, I really love that one. These have lots of nice feeling to them when you're listening to these songs. Twist and Shout, which is a nice one, where it has uh, John Lennon doing his quote. Um, the people in the cheaper seats clap your hands and... Russius Rattle Your Jewelry or something like that, he says, which is funny. And um, this boy, 
which is a really nice one. And then, I want to hold your hand. Really good one there. And that's kind of a speech thing I could live without. It's uh, a guy, um, Eric and Aaron. They kind of like do a joke comedy thing with uh, the Beatles. It's about three minute track or something. I could live without it. Um, cause they do Moonlight Bay, which I, I honestly don't really care for that song. That's probably the weakest on the whole entire disc. I don't really care for it. It's not really anything to be proud of, in my opinion, but whatever. Um, next one, which is Can't Buy Me Love, which is an earlier take. Which is a really nice one. It has kind of a different version to it. It has harmonies on there, which is nice. Um, All My Lovin', which I believe the version on here is from the Ed Sullivan Show of February 9th, 1964. Uh, what can you say? It's a great performance. I love it. They featured uh, <coughs> Ed Sullivan's uh, introduction at the beginning of it. I love that. Um, next one, You Can't Do That, which is a pretty cool version on here. And I Love Her, which I believe is uh, just in the studio. It's all right. And then A Hard Day's Night. Which is um, pretty corner. I want to be a man. I really love that. It's just a raw feeling to it. Same as Long Toss Sally and Boys. Those are really nice uh, live songs or different takes of those. And then Shout, which is uh, another great one on there. And then I'll Be Back Demo, which is alright. And I'll Be Back Complete. Um... Another one which I kind of wish the Beatles re-recorded, which is You Know What To Do, which I believe is a Harrison original, I believe. Um, you Know What To Do. It's pretty simple, but I wish it was redone. It's just a really catchy, nice song there. It has No Reply Demo, Mr. Moonlight. And then another highlight on here, probably the highlight of this too, um, which is Leave My Kitten Alone. I really like this song. John Lennon's really raw voice and um, their playing sounds really heavy for 1964. I wish they did that on the Beatles for Sale session. And they have no reply. They have eight days a week, false starts, which is okay. And then eight days a week. And the one that closed the whole album is Kansas City Hey Hey Hey. I think a live version, which is uh, a really nice one. I love that. Um, I like how Paul kind of sings it different. He says bye bye pretty baby or something like that. I really like that. So this album is a, a must have. I believe. I think it's the second best out of the anthologies. All three of them the second best. Um, I think though this is the one to have out of all three. Even though it's my second best. I believe it's the one to have. Because basically disc one. Most of this one is all Beatles recordings that you never heard of because it was before Ringo was in the band. Um, and um, it has some lots of uh, great live recordings on here. And I think any Beatles fan, even if you don't like this era of the Beatles, you should get it because it really shows that they were still a pretty hard rocking band. And I think. And the people that say, which I don't understand why, the people that say the early Beatles are a boy band, I don't understand. You should really hear this because this proves that they weren't in a boy band, especially before Ringo came. Um, so this album is great. Um, what I could add on here, like I said at the beginning, I wish you had like Cavern Club recordings. Or also, I wish they had the song called Catwalk or something like that, which was something done in Hamburg, I think, with Pete Best. Um, so that's basically all I gotta say. I don't really think any of the songs should be taken off. Maybe I'll get you because it's okay. And maybe Freeze a Bird because it's not really an original song on here. It's just the new Beatles song. So this album I give a 5 out of 5. Great album and I totally recommend it. So anyway, that's my review and stay tuned for the second one. Thanks for watching. Bye.